Hey, how's it going? And today we're going to take a quick look at the Take Quarter. I want to preface this by saying that I absolutely love Unreal Engine. I have to tell you that a lot of the stuff on here is not very intuitive. I've found it's kind of a struggle to piece things together. So anyway, go to Games, Blank Project. This is going to be called My Project 3. No starter content. And we'll go create. And this will just take a minute to load up as always. And here we go. So right away, a couple things I, I got to do is I come into edit preferences. We'll type in orbit. Orbit. And this is just what you have to do to be able to navigate appropriately in the system. And then we have to go in and hopefully this will change in the future. But we have to enable the take recorder. I would think that... It's going to be such a major component of the that we would just be doing it all the time. I mean, it would be in there just by default. So we just have to go ahead and restart again. And it's going to take a minute to load up. And here we go. Okay, so the reason I don't start with starter content is if I put starter content, it's going to bring in that table and chairs. And it's like a staff meeting. I, I don't need that or want that. So I like this landscape just to have something cool to kind of look at. And then what we're going to need is I need a character to film. So we're going to come in here to add and we're going to go to add feature content pack and we'll just add the third person right here. It just takes a second to load up. And now I have a much better backdrop with the character. So I'm going to go in content, characters, mannequins, animations, Quinn, <laughs> and idle. And we're just gonna drag her onto the scene. So we have her to film. And now if I hit Alt, because I enabled Orbit, you see how easy I can zoom around here. It make, And I can hit F to really get in on her. But look, it's just so much easier to navigate with that Orbit. So I was gonna kind of try to get kind of some kind of epic stance. So I'm just gonna hit the uh, right mouse button here and just kind of zoom her over like that trying to keep her head above the horizon okay so I, I like that shot right there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in a camera to film with so we go to cinematics and cine camera actor what I find easier sometimes is just to use these controls to try to navigate rather than trying to grab this thing it doesn't always uh, cooperate it doesn't always seem to want to cooperate with me Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So uh, just there she is. So I'm just going to use these controls over here. I find it easier. So relatively speaking. Whoops, not bank. It takes me a while to get. I'm so not used to these, this direction of things. And then I guess we can come up here. You know, just scooch. We can kind of come in and have her just like that can i bank this not bank this but pitch it we'll just pitch it a little bit okay it's not going to be the greatest shot in the world but just to have something to film and then she's out of focus so i'm just going to bump up the aperture so everything's in focus essentially now we have our shot framed up and this is where the take recorder comes in now i want to explain my confusion with this I, I have a problem i just feel like i have the shot framed up it seems to me like i could just hit record and just start recording i don't i have the camera why can't i just hit record and start recording i have it framed up so unfortunately you've got to to walk the through the program a little bit more and then the other thing that's a problem is that you do something in Unreal Engine you click one thing and then 10 other things happen and so it's kind of interesting and it's confusing when you're first starting and eventually it, it all makes sense but in the beginning it's really confusing so and I'm going to give you a perfect example right now so I'm going to click on take recorder and watch what happens you think I'm going into the take recorder right I click the take recorder and watch what happens. Look, the sequencer comes up and now I'm in the sequencer. And actually, I don't want to be in the sequencer. I want to be in the take recorder. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It kind of does things for you and it's confusing. So I got to go back to here. Now, what's interesting is to film something in Unreal, it has to be brought onto the animation timeline. So one way to think of it almost is that anything that's frameable or filmable or key frameable needs to be brought onto the timeline. And in this case, since she's already animated, I don't need to bring her animation in. She's already in the scene. But I do need to bring the camera onto the timeline because it is key frameable, the camera itself. I need to bring it onto the timeline because it wants a source of 
what it's filming. So what I do is I come down here to source, I go from actor, and I, I pick the city camera actor. And that's all I need on the take recorder. Another thing that's weird about it is it's constantly running, so I'm assuming that it's driven by a tick. So it's just go, 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 but it's weird that it's already constantly running. Like as soon as you bring it in, it's already running. So when I first saw this, I was like, what, what is it doing something? And it's not really doing anything. It's just like an engine idling at a red light or something. So it's just waiting for you to bring something, the source. And then all you gotta do is we're on scene one, take one. I'll show you what I think is the advantage of it now. Once you get the, all of your mind around all this part of it. So all we have to do is hit record and it's gonna start recording. It takes a second and automatically it's recording the scene. So I could also be, if I had some keyframe on the sequencer where I'd move the camera and it'd be recording that, but that would be on the sequencer, but this is just a static shot. So then I'll let this record and I'll just hit stop. So that's our first take done. It has popped me back into sequencer. I'm gonna go back into the take recorder and let's say I didn't like this shot. So let's say I wanna do it again. So let's say I wanna punch in even closer on her so let's see which what's going to do that for me so let's say we're going to get it kind of an extreme close-up here that's an extreme close-up uncomfortably close you could say but let's say that's the shot i want so then all i have to do i've moved the camera made some slight adjustment this thing's running away it's not recording anything all i have to do is hit this button and now it's recording take two of scene one so I guess I could have called action. <laughs> and now it's recording. And I just want you to stand there. Okay, it looks sad. And then I go cut. And then the camera goes off. And that pops me back into sequencer again, see? The beauty, I guess, of this thing is that it's recorded the scenes for us. Now I'll show you. We go into the content browser. We go to content. It's automatically created this folder called cinematics is when I said that you know you click one thing and 10 other things happen this is one of the things that happened is it's recorded the takes it's created this folder and it's put them inside this folder so I go here to takes hence the name take recorder and here are my two takes this part of it I do appreciate let's say I want to see one of the scenes the very first take I did I double click this and there it is and it's it's automatically loaded it into the sequencer. So now, actually, I can just render this out if I like this take. And if I don't like it, I can come back in here. I can go back here and double click this one. And then it's loaded this one in. The only thing is I don't see this up here. But what I could do is just come up here to perspective and go to the cine camera and I can see it. I won't see her moving, but I, I see like a representation of this here. So I know, I mean, I just saw the scene, so I don't really need to see it that much again. So, but let's say I like the first take. So I'll just come back to the content browser. I'll go to the first take, double click that. It loads in and now I'm ready to render this out. So all I'd have to do is come in here and click this and I did want to mention something really quickly. I've been reading some stuff. I saw this article here like uh, why you should not use PNG files for image sequences. And I've always used PNG files. They're, they're high quality. The only reason that I can see that they don't like PNG so much is that the reason being that they're computationally expensive. True as that may be with today's modern computers and storage, especially if you're doing a small short film, I don't see any problems with PNGs. In fact, I think I could show you a film shot with PNG sequences or one shot with E. XR images sequence, and I don't think anybody would be able to tell the difference. So, but I, I don't doubt that maybe it is comp uh, computationally expensive, but I don't have a problem with rendering out in PNG sequences. So I've always rendered out in PNG for a lot of the, because I'm not doing a major film in PNG sequences. It's usually just short things. So anyway, so I'm gonna go to PNG sequence here and I'll pop it in a folder. Let me find a folder to put this in. I'll just put it over here. Oh, here's one. I'll go select folder. Keep it on 100 for quality. And then I'll just go capture movie. Save. Save. And then it just renders out. So this is going to just be a kind of a quick and dirty overview of the take recorder. 
And like I said, if you can just get your mind around it initially, the confusing things is that it's already running constantly. As soon as you click it, it pops you into Sequencer, whether you want to go to Sequencer or not. And then you got to go back to Take Recorder. Then once you do the take and you stop recording, it creates the folders with the takes in it. And then you can go back and you know, render out those takes and look at them and see if you like them. So I can see the convenience of it, but also in the beginning, I do think it's confusing. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. This was just a quick and dirty look at the take recorder. I hope to be doing a follow-up to this tutorial soon. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you.